What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with the full review for you of the Samsung Galaxy S2 for AT&T. Let's go ahead and dig in and see if this really is the king of the smartphone world. So very few phones come with as much hype as the Galaxy S2 is. Our European brethren have had this phone for a few months before it finally hit US shores. And here it is all dressed up in AT&T clothing. So let me run through the specs of this super phone very quickly. This is arguably one of the best spec phones on the market. So we are looking at a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display with a resolution of 480 by 800. It's got Gorilla Glass on there so you can bang it around in your pocket, put some keys in there, hopefully not scratch it. Does not mean it's scratch proof though, so don't get upset and yell at me when your beautiful new phone's got a gash across it. It's not gonna protect it much in drops either, so keep that in mind. So it's got TouchWiz 4.0 with uh, Android Gingerbread sitting on top of it being powered by a dual core 1.2 gigahertz chip, and this thing is a screamer. I will talk about that a bit more. Uh, it's augmented with one gig of RAM, and that's my big word for this review. 16 gigs of storage, eight megapixel camera on the back with a pretty awesome autofocus sensor that can also shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second, and it weighs 116 grams. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about call quality first. It's a phone. Doesn't matter how many gigahertz or cores it has, if it sucks making calls, it's not gonna be much use to you. Uh, this phone runs on AT&T's HSPA Plus network, so they are billing it as a 4G network. Uh, call quality is actually very good. Um, I experienced only one drop call in my 20 call test. Speakerphone was exceptionally loud, which is surprising for a uh, device this thin, but the speakers on here are not bad. Um, I did have a tad bit of popping noise though on my end on about seven of the calls that I made. Um, it wasn't necessarily that noticeable, but I did hear it. And I did have some issues connecting with a few Bluetooth accessories, uh, those made by Jabra in particular, I did have some difficulty with. That might have been just this device, but if Jabra is what you use for your Bluetooth, uh, you might want to try this out first in the store if possible. Uh, so call quality was decent, not tremendous, it's good enough. So you don't have to worry if you want to get this, it's going to be fine in the call quality department. But let's talk about what everybody wants to know about the Galaxy S2, and that's the raw speed of the phone. So for me, where I know to speed the most and where the power comes most to me, and maybe I'm alone on this, is web browsing. I hate seeing that checkerboard pattern as I'm scrolling through a website, and I don't see it here at all. This phone is incredibly fast, pinch to zoom, with flash on, although no flash content's being shown here, uh, is really quick. The browser is outstanding. Uh, it is probably one of the best browsing experiences on a mobile device. Uh, if you saw my review on the Droid Bionic, I praised it for its extremely fast, really almost eloquent, uh, buttery smooth browsing. Uh, this one is just as good. Uh, just really, <laughs> Samsung did an incredible job uh, taking advantage of the native browser. Here you can see the physics engine at work in Android to put together just an amazing browsing experience. So if browsing is going to be important to you, the speed here is pretty uh, pretty outstanding. See a speed of loading a web page here, it's never been loaded before. I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, just the HSPA Plus network. We'll talk about that in just a minute. You can see how things work. It is just lightning fast. All right, so there's browsing for you. Even on sites that are heavy on flash, wasn't a problem here uh, at all. All right, so let's talk about speed of applications. Uh, with one gig of RAM, I never once had to go into a task manager and readjust applications or close things. It was never even an issue. It's something that I was very conscious of on, let's say, last generation Android devices. Uh, on this generation, it has a gig or more. Uh, never been an issue at all. Opening applications, lightning fast, um, just <laughs> pleasure to use. So whether or not you are a multitasking demon, uh, you're not going to have to worry. Everything here just opens up and works very quickly and you're not going to have to close applications. Uh, for those of you that want to know what the raw speed numbers were, uh, I did run a quadrant test, and I used this test on all of my smartphones that I test, at least on the Android smartphones. It might not be the most accurate, but it is um, what I've tested on every single Android phone uh, for the past almost year. So it does make for a pretty uh, even test, and I did get a score of 2,881, and this is with a stock ROM. Uh, you can see sort of how far ahead that is here. So from a spec standpoint, even with the stock ROM, it is outstanding. If you wanna get in there and tinker with the ROMs, you can even get that score up higher. 
Point being, if speed's what you're worried about, you are not going to have to concern yourself with it on the Galaxy S2. This thing is just absolutely incredibly fast. From a speed standpoint, let's talk about network. It is a 4G device after all, right? So I am HSPA+, I'm in Southern California, which is blanketed HSPA+, and I've got almost full bars of service. Let's go ahead and run a speed test for fun. So here is the speedtest.net app, finding closest server. Let's be able to find the LA server. If not, I'll set it to it. No Wi-Fi connected here at all. Let's begin test. And let's see what we get, just for fun. So connected to the Los Angeles-based server. And we are right now at point, almost at 1, 1 1.2. So we're getting there. All right, 1.43 was what we got. And it's actually the fastest test that I've had here on the HSPA Plus network. Uh, and just about 0.5-ish on the upload. And we are done. All right, so just for laughs, let's bring in an iPhone here using the non-HSPA Plus network. And let's run a speed test. Wi-Fi has been turned off just as 3G with about three bars. So we'll go ahead and run a similar test. And this is obviously just a test of AT&T's network. There's nothing really to do with the Galaxy S2 itself. Um, just something that I found very interesting. So let's see if I can duplicate the results here. So the ping was just about the same. iPhone is just about one, petering back down a little bit. 0.51 on the download. Let's go ahead and check the upload here. And I, I speed test everywhere I go. I don't know, it's a, maybe it's an obsessive compulsive thing, compulsive thing or the inner geek in me. Uh, I just can't stop testing. So I even got faster speeds on the upload and about a third slower on the downs. I got a hard time classifying this as 4G. Now certainly your speeds are gonna vary depending on where you are. This is just a test of an isolated incident in Southern California. In fact, on other tests I've ran, this has actually come out much faster uh, than this guy. So you can use that term 4G and take it with a bit of a grain of salt, at least until we see LTE uh, start coming out on mobile devices. So I'll push this guy off to the side and we'll continue our test. Let's talk about this screen now. It is Super AMOLED Plus and it's Super AMOLED Awesome. Uh, text here looks really, really crisp. So let's go ahead go into some articles, there we go. We'll zoom in. Text here absolutely pops. You're not gonna have any sort of pixelation. Sometimes on older screens, and you zoomed in, you could see pixelation. Uh, on these modern screens, though, you very rarely see it. Uh, the screen here, just though, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so let me show you some images here. Let's go ahead and we'll hit home. I'll go ahead and jump into gallery. So maybe I can find gallery. I always have a hard time finding that. Let's see if I can see, probably see, probably imagine you guys screaming at it in the comments. There it is, there it is, there's gallery. But I will find it on my own. All right, so there it is, gallery. Let's go ahead and show you some images that we've got here. So, I took some photos of water bottles. Something cool I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute. We'll go ahead and hit done. So, there's a water bottle. Go ahead and turn it like this. It looks really nice. The autofocus here works extremely well, and I'll show you guys an example of that. But there's something else kind of neat here. So if you want to zoom in on web pages or images, you can pinch to zoom like normal, and that works just about as well as you expect, so very well. But Samsung is something else new in here too. If you put two fingers on the screen and you tilt in or out, you can actually control the zoom, which is kind of gimmicky, but the more I use it, the more I found myself uh, finding it invaluable and actually started doing zooming like this. Uh, it's pretty handy, it's also pretty precise. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what this camera looks like. We'll go ahead and hit the camera button. It's not a hard button for camera, it's all soft buttons here. So there's that same water bottle we used for our last subject. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the shot, and you can see it autofocus, and it takes a picture. Uh, it's pretty fast having a picture too. Uh, video, it does shoot in 1080p, it looks average for a cell phone. It's not outstanding. Uh, but it's better than a lot of cell phone-esque images. Uh, I can take this video and I can upload it to YouTube, but you're gonna see a degradation in quality uh, from that. So take my word for it, it looks decent. Uh, if you're out shooting your friends or wanna shoot pictures of your dog, uh, this is gonna work. It certainly it's not gonna replace a handy cam, but it is going to uh, you know, do a decent job. All right, so let's talk a bit more about the screen. Let me go ahead and jump back a webpage and go back to the main technobuffalo.com.
uh, site. So ever since Samsung released the first uh, AMOLED and Super AMOLED, Super AMOLED Plus displays, they've been plagued by a little bit of a bluish hue in it. Um, so if I go ahead and pull out, here's the iPhone by comparison, the same page, you can see that that bluish hue is still here on the Samsung Galaxy S2. It's not something that really impedes the use of the device, but something that I'm definitely cognizant of. Uh, if you've ever gone to Best Buy or Walmart, wherever you go to look at TVs, for example, and you see a really expensive TV next to a less expensive TV, uh, you notice the difference of the screens when they're next to each other. However, once one of them is gone and you get it home and put it on your wall, it looks great. Uh, and the screen here is uh, no exception. I've spoken to a few people that actually prefer this blue hue. They find it to be a bit more natural. Uh, for me, it's not my preferred sort of color grain, uh, but the screen is gorgeous. And it's really hard to deny uh, that this is probably one of the best screens um, on a mobile device right now. But keep that in mind. If you're one of the few people that that blue hue is going to bother you, uh, try it out in the store after using it for a couple of days. I hardly even noticed it uh, anymore at all. All right, so now let's talk a bit about the design. I mentioned at the beginning that our European friends had the Galaxy S2 for a little while, and indeed they did. But when it came to US shores here in AT&T clothing, AT&T ugged up a supermodel looking phone. Uh, on the European version, you had just three buttons. You had a big home button here, and then two buttons flanking it. Now we've got those four sort of typical capacitive Android buttons, and it's ugly. It is not a good looking phone, which is unfortunate because it's really pretty inside. The specs here are incredible. It's like putting Groucho Marx glasses on a supermodel. Uh, it's just not the prettiest phone to look at. It looks like every other Android phone out there, which is unfortunate because it's much better than uh, pretty much every other Android phone out there. I like that big home button that Samsung had on the European version. If I wanted to unlock the device, I could just tap that as opposed to having to hit the button here on the side, which admittedly is not a big deal. Uh, but I was kind of cognizant of it um, as I was using the phone. So personal preference, I think it's not the best looking phone on the market, but it's definitely one of the best Android phones on the market, and certainly the best Android phone in AT&T's lineup. Um, on the back, Samsung, this whole back part here is plastic, and it's kind of flimsy plastic if you take it off. Go ahead and show you. You can see it's very, very thin. However, once it's on, it sits so flush over that battery they don't even notice how thin it is. So the build quality does feel pretty solid. Uh, you know that it's a bit of a plasticky feel to it, but it's not bad. Um, I would have liked maybe some sort of metal accents that would have made it be a bit heavier. Uh, but, you know, that might be a personal preference thing here. Um, on the operating system side, so you do have TouchWiz. You can see all that TouchWizzy goodness uh, that Samsung's got here. Uh, TouchWiz has gotten a lot more out of your way uh, than in previous versions uh, we've seen. So it's now in its fourth iteration. Let me show you some of the widget action here. So you hold that down, now you've got immediately a new way to select what you want. You can see it right here. We'll go ahead and jump into widgets. And now they all show up sort of as a nice list. You can see what they are. They sort of crunch in and crunch out. Um, there's a lot of nice additions here. Featured apps, latitude, power savings, voice stuff, and all the goodness they'd expect from Android, including a really awesome free turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Uh, if you're on the fence with what operating system to get and you're not in love with Apple, for whatever reason, you don't have to have a Windows Phone 7. Uh, the free turn-by-turn -turn navigation really is a killer feature that people have forgotten about. You don't have to pay for Telenav or any sort of additional add-on. Uh, it's free. If you can deal with the robotic voice, it works really, really, really well, um, as well as any other navigation system that I've used uh, on a mobile device. So, you know, keep that in mind as you go through and decide what phone is right for you. So a bit of an ugly design aside, this is definitely the best Android experience I have used. If it had true 4G speeds, I could say that this phone is the best phone uh, that I reviewed. But those dismal 1.8-ish, 1.5 speed, which is actually the fastest that I've seen on my tests here, uh, make it hard to give this guy a perfect 5 out of 5. Now, if you're in an area where that speed's not going to be a problem, you're always connected to Wi-Fi or HSPA Plus is faster by you, then 5 out of 5, no-brainer, hands down, for the Galaxy S2. However, if you're like me in an area where HSPA Plus might as well be edge speeds, uh, it's tough to give it five stars. So I'll give it a solid four and a half with that half to make up for the speed difference. From a battery standpoint, I was easily able to get to a full day with the screen set to auto brightness and with email accounts pulling down all the time, about two hours of phone calls and a ridiculous amount of browsing, more than I want to admit on video. Uh, this is a great phone and one I can wholeheartedly recommend to those on AT&T looking to pick up uh, the best smartphone on the planet. And one of the questions that I get 
is should I get the Galaxy S2? I hear quad-core might be coming. This is an awesome phone. It's a well-specced phone. It's gonna be a fast phone uh, for the next two years. So it might not be the fastest phone on the market a year from now, but it's always gonna be able to keep up with what's coming. And with a processor like this, you'll be able to get the most recent updates of Android, assuming Samsung releases them, you know, ice cream sandwich or whatever comes next after that. So don't worry, pick up this phone if you want some uh, Android action. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Android action, that sounds, that sounds really bad. Uh, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Make sure to check out the website for all your tech news, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.